Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our latest Four Winds Executive Webinar. For today's session, we've asked our Head of Operations to take a star turn and talk about what she's done over the last year with her operations team, comprising all the services that Four Winds offers, from visual communications consulting to creative development, app creation, and business consulting. When we heard her story, we had the perfect title for the webinar, Taking an Operations Team from Good to Great. I'm Janet Eden Harris, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Four Winds Interactive. When we conceived this webinar series, it was because I was struck by how much expertise there is here in the business. Best practices in finance and HR, operations and sales management. And I thought that many of you might just be interested in learning from some of that hard-won knowledge that you could apply in your own organizations. So I'm excited to present our third webinar in this new series with our Senior Vice President of Operations, Cassidy Smirnow. As you'll hear, Cass has really leveraged our internal digital communications network to improve the amount of time that our consulting and services teams spend with clients and the very tangible impact that that's had on our bottom line. But before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. First, to limit background noise, we've placed all the participants on mute. That doesn't mean that we don't want your questions, though. We'll have a Q&A session at the end. But you can also use and, and deliver questions through our note here at the bottom, webinar at fourwindsinteractive.com. We'll be monitoring those live and we'll get to as many of them as we can in the 45 minutes we've set aside for the webinar. But if we don't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you directly. We'll also be recording the session and if you'd like to get a copy, use that same email to let us know and we'll get the materials to you. And now, to kick things off, we'd like to open with a quick video from our CEO, David Levin, talking about what it means to operate in the new digital workplace. Welcome to our new office, under construction. After 10 years, we finally have the opportunity to build out our own office completely from scratch. And we're building it out to be the prototype of the digital workplace. We're building out state-of-the-art offices here in Denver because we wanted to envision what the workplace is like over the next 10 years and then build visual communications into that environment. In a few short months, this space will become the model for the workplace of the future. I'm David Levin, I'm the CEO of Four Winds Interactive, and we like to think of ourselves as the visual layer in the digital business, enabling organizations to engage their customers and their workforce by putting the right information on the right screen at the right time in a visually engaging way, all from a single software platform. This webinar series is designed to bring answers to the questions that most organizations are facing when they think about how to communicate effectively in today's digital world. To your customers, to your workforce, to your students and fans, to anyone who you interact with in a meaningful way. Cassidy Smirnow, our SVP of Operations, joined FWI four years ago and has made a big impact since day one. Cassidy uses our software to make visual key pieces of information that are critical to our operation, including customer satisfaction survey results, project schedules, and utilization leaderboards. I think you'll enjoy this webinar as she walks through what she did, the results she achieved, and what her team delivered in bottom line benefit. We're excited to bring you this information as part of our ongoing executive webinar series. Good morning, everyone. I'm Cassidy Smirnow, and I run operations here at Four Winds Interactive. Before I get into my story today, I thought I would give you all a quick preview of what I have in store for you. First, we're going to talk about what we all have in common, trying to do more with less. I'm sure this is not a new concept for many of you. Next, we're going to hit on how visual communications matter, especially when you're trying to do more with less. Then I'm going to tell you a story of how the digital workplace helped me make a big change that ultimately drove the performance I was looking for. And last, I'm going to share the anticipated financial results of that change. Get ready for a shocker. Even I was surprised when I actually sat down to do my ROI calculation on this project. So I joined Four Winds about four years ago. And I wasn't really looking for a new job, but once I visited the Foreman's offices in downtown Denver to visit a friend for lunch, I was hooked. I didn't realize how much I longed to get back into a fast-growing company with a killer product and a team full of passion around that product. I was hired to run operations, and my primary focus was around improving and then growing our professional services business. 
And our professional services team is really key in helping our customers adopt our platform across their organization. Customer success is really our job. I'm really no different than most operations executives in that I'm always very narrowly focused on my bottom line. My goal when I come to work every day is to figure out how to do more with less, to do it more efficiently, with a higher degree of quality, and all the while increasing my profits. That probably sounds really familiar to most of you. No matter what business you are in, whether you are creating a product or delivering a service, all of us operations folks have this desire in common. Typically, a huge factor in this desired bottom line success stems from the productivity of your team. It's no different here at Four Winds. I knew my ability to increase profitability was linked to my ability to increase the productivity of my team. So how was I going to do it here? I knew I had to start with defining my goal. Prior to Four Winds, I had always practiced goal setting, and I had experienced increased performance across teams over time in almost every leadership role I have had. I have experienced in my career a very direct relationship between clearly identified goals and performance. This is actually a highly studied and proven concept. In fact, the most known psychologist and pioneer in goal setting theory is Ed Locke, who just happened to be a colleague of my dad's at the University of Maryland growing up. I had no idea at the time that he was a pioneer in this field, but you could say I grew up with goal setting theory from a very early age. Studies by Locke and his colleagues starting in the early 1960s really established the positive relationship between goals and performance. So in business, if you think about this, goal setting encourages participants to put in substantial effort. Also, because every member has defined expectations for their role, little room is left for inadequate marginal effort to go unnoticed. Put short, poor performance. So managers cannot constantly drive motivation or keep track of an employee's work on a continuous basis. So goals are therefore a really important tool for managers since goals have the ability to function as self-regulatory mechanism that helps employees prioritize their own tasks. So I knew my reason for being was to increase revenue and bottom line of our professional services business. But I had to turn this mission into really actionable goals for my team. Before I could do that, I had to understand my current situation. Professional services revenue is based on services delivered by people. And typically, this involves some form of tracking time spent on customer projects or initiatives and leveraging that time to invoice customers for those services that are delivered. That build time equals revenue. That time also becomes the most fundamental metric across the professional services organization, which is utilization, the key measurement of productivity. So guess what I found when I started working at Forwinds? A couple of things. We weren't really tracking time consistently. The time we were tracking sporadically was in a system that didn't touch any of our other systems. There were no expectations around tracking time, and managers weren't accountable for having their teams enter time. So in short, our team didn't understand their goals. Based on the data I could put together at the time, I determined that our current utilization was about 45%. That was my baseline. Industry average is about 70% for a professional services firm supporting an in-house software platform. So while I was saddened by the 45%, I immediately saw it as a wonderful opportunity to improve. Once I understood the current situation and the current status, I could formulate a more actionable goal to increase utilization across my team to 70%. My goal was based on what I thought the productivity of this team could be, what our backlog of work looked like, and what our revenue goals for the business were. I took several steps to drive towards this goal. The first thing we did was start tracking the data consistently. We created time entry requirements, training, and management practices to ensure accurate time tracking was in place. The second thing we did was started to share the data and the utilization calculations. This was tricky because time tracking occurred in a different system than the system where we managed projects and created invoices for customers. But we manipulated the data and started reporting on it by sending emails to managers and then they started talking to their teams. 
And the last thing we did was share the goal to achieve 70% utilization across the team. And we shared this goal in emails and in team meetings. So what happened? The results? Eh. Over several months, we moved the needle a little bit, but not as much as I hoped we would, despite the fact that we had plenty of work to do for our customers. So why was I not getting the results I had hoped for? Ultimately, the problem was I sent out my monthly utilization results on about the 20th day of the month for the prior month. It was way too late to affect change. It wasn't actionable in the moment, or the week, or even the month. Managers didn't have the tools to drive change based on the results that were reported. And in short, the data was not timely enough to drive behavior. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought about two things. I realized that I had to find a way to get real-time, actionable metrics in front of my team so that they could affect the behavior real-time. And then I started contemplating this idea of visual performance management that we were talking to our customers about, which was really just an extension, if you think about it, of my existing belief in the goal-setting theory of motivation. So once you set those challenging yet attainable goals and you get the buy-in from your team, people need to receive constant feedback so that they can understand their progress towards those goals. I had to figure out how to make it easy and effortless for any team member to always know where they stood compared to their goal and compared to their teammates. In short, I needed to make it visual. So first step, as for getting real-time data, at Four Winds, we manage our business largely on the Force.com platform. Everything from sales, implementation, support, supply chain, and so forth. So with a little custom coding, we moved our time tracking into Salesforce, ultimately tying project budgets, tasks, and resources to time tracking and ultimately invoicing. This move allowed us to track virtually real-time utilization in one central platform. The second thing I did, as I mentioned, was think about this idea of visual performance management. And the picture you see here on the screen is a picture of just that. Visual performance manage management was introduced to facilitate performance measurement and communication in different manufacturing processes and to help drive operations real time. More specifically, strategic practices such as lean manufacturing, Six Sigma, and total quality management all leverage key performance indicators, or KPIs, to assess, analyze, and track business manufacturing processes, and all leverage visual management to drive those results. Is visual performance management new? No. The, visual, the value of visual management has been apparent since the debut of the Toyota production system. Toyota's rev revolutionary, get this, socio-technical system for manufacturing developed in the late 40s. And one of the 14 principles of this Toyota plan was about implementing visual control so issues are not hidden. So visual performance management is not a new concept. Early on, data was collected by a person with a stopwatch, a pencil, and a clipboard, which was later transferred to a large chalkboard. Obviously, that's not how we do it today. Our large digi digital displays have taken the place of chalkboards, but they've become the industry stand for, standard for displaying these KPIs. So in a nutshell, visual management is about ensuring that the workplace has sufficient visual information so that all staff can clearly see and understand workplace priorities and adjust behavior and actions accordingly. And I knew visualization was a good thing. It seemed that the visual layer could really help me achieve my goal of 70% utilization. I decided I need to publish my real-time utilization to the screens where my employees sat. So I started publishing weekly utilization metrics, as you see here, which I could now do with my centralized data. I published this by individual and by team across all of my professional services workforce throughout our office on all of our digital displays. My team effortlessly could not only see their individual current utilization percentage for the current week, but also where they stood against other departments in the professional services team, as you see here. And in this example, you'll see our creative team far exceeded their goal. But I also started showing this information um, for employees compared to their direct peers, those who shared the same role. And you see here how we've chosen to display individuals across a team. What happened was really remarkable. Of course, there was a little bit of nervousness 
across the team. Seeing performance so visually and transparently was really different. Transparency to mistakes, if you will, was really up front and center. But immediately, things changed. Team members who didn't have their time entered on time and therefore had poor results on the displays immediately took action. They emailed their managers the reasons for their delay, or they emailed to request more work. Another surprising thing happened. People started asking us to present the data in different ways. Specifically, they wanted us to show how many billable hours they would have to record in the current month to hit the goal, as seen here. So they quickly became motivated, not only by where they stood, but what action they would have to take to improve. And this part was really revolutionary for us. To go from not tracking time at all to keep people and teammates taking responsibility for hitting goals was really, really new. So what happened this time? In the first two weeks, we started publishing these metrics across our screen. We increased 200 customer hours over the prior two weeks. 200 hours I didn't have before with no increase in staff, which means that's pure additional profit for our business. So let's contemplate what this ROI could look like with a success like that. Now granted, at the time I put this presentation together, I only had about one month of data. But if I could add 200 hours in less than two weeks, I assumed that I could add 200 hours a month for the next six months. That would get me to my goal of 70% utilization. Of course, there are many other factors that, that are going to contribute to our ability to achieve this goal. The amount of work we have, our fully trained and ramped team, and maybe most importantly, the incentive I could provide to help us meet our goal. 200 hours per month across our team equates to about two and a half hours per month per resource. So it's totally possible. And by the way, since I published this, we are two months in and have exceeded our 200 hours per month for both of those months. So in the first year, because we have this ramp getting to our goal, we expect to see an additional 1.3 million in revenue invoice. That's a humongous change. In subsequent years, once we hit that 70% goal and assume we don't exceed that goal, which I think is totally possible, we'll realize $1.7 million in additional revenue for the second and third year. This means our three-year increased revenue would be about $4.8 million. Because this is new revenue without additional people, this is all incremental new margin. However, I'm going to assume that I'll take 10% of this new margin and give it back to the team in form of an incentive payout for hitting the goals. That leaves my average monthly additional profit at $119,000 a month. Okay, so now that I figured out what I expect my additional profit to be, let's take a look at expenses and what it costs me to implement this rate project. So I have roughly about 10 screens and player computers sitting in my operations areas at Four Winds. At roughly a cost of $1,500 per setup, that equals $15,000 in hardware. It cost me about $30,000 in outside labor to consolidate my data into Salesforce to be able to track and report real time. My professional services team charged me about $10,000 to build the applications that graphically display these great KPIs, goals, and progress on our screens. So I had about $55,000 of one-time costs. Spread over 36 months, it's about $1,500 a month in expense. Next, if I were to pay for the 4Win software powering the solution, it would roughly be about $100 per player per month. So for me, about $1,000 a month. So all in, spread over three years, we're looking at roughly $2,500 in expenses per month. So what is our anticipated ROI? If you take the $119,000 in profit per month divided by my average monthly cost of $2,500, our ROI percentage is 4,700%, which I know you're all thinking is ridiculously high, and I agree, it's a hugely high number. But let's just say for the sake of argument, if I even got half of that, it's still a crazy high number and a great investment for an operations executive like me to see these results. So, in the end, did putting my key metric for productivity across my operations team on the screens in our office in and of itself move the needle for my team? No, it didn't. 
many things working together did. Let's review. One, determine the baseline. Know where you're at. Two, understand the goal. Three, share the goal to motivate your team. Four, get real-time data to measure performance to the goal. Five, providing visual, real-time reporting on the progress towards the goal. Because if you do all these things, people will change behavior. And they'll change behavior on their own without management influence. Last, having a world-class, smarter-than-most professional services team. I will conclude by saying, if you are running a team of any kind and you want to drive productivity, because who doesn't? Make sure your team has the information they need visually in a fun, effortless, engaging way so that they can clearly see their goals and how they are tracking to those goals so that they are motivated to adjust their behavior and their actions to meet the goal. Perhaps Dr. Suntz of the Mayo Clinic said it best, if I can see it, I can fix it. And I could not agree more. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys all for taking the time to listen. I'm happy to answer questions at this time. As we wait for questions to come in, I'm going to uh, share some ideas I have with you guys. Um, the first is, if you found my talk at all um, helpful and you want to learn more, we're hosting an industry conference on digital business next month, where executives from companies from almost every industry will be here and they'll be presenting on how they are using this technology to drive performance in their own business. So you could learn a lot more by joining us at our Forward Conference. Um, you will learn more about that on our Four Winds website. And then the other thing I would share with you guys, too, is that one of the many questions I keep getting is how we build these great applications displaying these KPIs and goals. And in the example I showed you today, our professional services team helped me build these applications. But we also have a host of pre-built best practice applications in our Four Winds store. And as we go through the Q&A today, we're going to actually show you some of those applications on our screen. And you can learn more about those as well on our website. So Janet, do we have any questions that have come in from the team? We do have a couple. Um, I think we'll start off with this first question that came in, which I thought was a great one. So who manages what information goes onto the signs? And how often do you update it? It is a great question. So through our software platform, we have lots of integrations with many different systems, um, and one of which is Salesforce. So as I kind of explained in my talk today, for us, most of our data lives there. So we leverage the integration we've built into Salesforce to display that information real time on our screens. We do still have sort of an operations analyst who manages um, and schedules the data. But one of the best practices we always share with our customers is is try to tap into the data where it lives natively. That way you're not duplicating effort and having a lot of overhead to manage your content. If you can tap into that data where it lives and extract what you need and create a great visual way to display it, you're going to win. So basically you don't tend to spend a lot of time every month having to manage it. Correct. Such a thing. Great. Uh, here's another great one. Uh, this person says, what if we are already pretty efficient? I think they say uh, we're almost at 70% utilization in our services group today, they estimate. So they went on to ask you, do you think this kind of program would help us? And if so, how? Well, I would definitely say it would. So there is likely, while you might have a great utilization number, there's probably some room for continuous improvement in any organization, right? Perhaps for you, it's not utilization. It's something else. Maybe you're trying to increase your customer satisfaction scores. You think of any goal that you're trying to meet, you could use that visual layer to display that goal and your team's progress towards that goal in almost any application. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple more coming in. Um, can you give us any examples of how other departments might drive performance with this concept? I think they're referring now to beyond operations. Yeah, and I, I don't know if any of our users today or our listeners have seen any of our other talks this year, but. Um, we do have a lot of applications for, for this visual layer across our company here at Four Winds. I mean, I think about um, our Elizabeth Mays and our um, talent in HR practice. She's using this technology to um, recognize employees and to advertise new hires and get to know each other. I think about Nigel and our, our CFO who's using this technology to help improve key operations in his finance and accounting department, such as accounts payable and uh, accounts receivable. So I think there's lots of different applications 
across your company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had another question come in just as you were speaking, referencing the fact that a lot of employees like to hear about the latest food options, for right. example. I think we have our favorite food truck out in front. We do. Um, okay, great. We uh, have a, like, a couple more coming in. This one says, we don't have a billable consultant in our company, but we do have several large manufacturing plants where we track output, and we certainly care about safety. Would you see this sign network being helpful for a manufacturing team? Definitely. I mean, as I discussed in my talk, the idea of visual performance management originates from manufacturing space. But instead of the whiteboards and the chalkboards, you know, leveraging the data where it lives on these, the visual displays, leveraging, you know, four wind software is, is very powerful and I think has a great application in manufacturing. Great. Um, we've had a couple of people come in and request the email again to request the presentation, which we will make available. So just uh, for reference, it's webinar at fourwindsinteractive.com. All right, and we've got, I think, one more meaty question here for you, Cass. Spending money to centralize data or getting everything in the cloud is often hard to justify. How would you recommend, recommend that we justify that expense? That's a great question. I, I struggled with this myself when we were scoping the project to move more information into the cloud and into Salesforce. It was hard to justify what we were going to get out of that, other than it felt like a really good idea. Having data in one place feels like the right thing to do. So I, I would encourage everybody to think about how you leverage that data once you get it in one place, like we did. And that's really where the, the ROI comes in from the investment. If you have your data real time in one place, it can start leveraging that data to run your business better. That's where you're going to get the ROI. Yep, that makes sense. All right, well, in respect for everyone's time, I think we'll wrap up the questions. We, again, will have this presentation available. So you can email us and let us know any questions. We will send it out to you with a link. Um, and another shameless plug for the Forward Conference, and I say shameless just because I think it's going to be terrific. We're going to have executives from uh, companies, large and small, that are talking about how they're using this technology in their organization. They're driving huge change. So I think, Kath, your example, pretty spectacular, 6,100%, it's just phenomenal. So again, I uh, encourage you to check out the website site and register. It's going to be the 21st through the 23rd of October. And with that, I think we'll wrap it up. And thanks to all for joining us for this webinar. And we will come back to you with yet one more in November later this fall. Thanks again.